know that you're awake and with me. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it good to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Oh, come on, let me hear an amen. God is worthy to be praised. of his mercy, because of his love. Father, as we're coming to your presence this morning, I pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will just engulf us, Lord. Father, that our mouths will open, that our worship will be lifted, that it will be sweet to your nostrils this morning, that we will not be hindered in our praise to you, that we will not be restricted in our adoration to you, that we will not be restricted in giving to you what is due to your name. So we come and we give you worship, and we give you praise, and we give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It reminds me of Isaiah 40, verse 31. It reminds us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So who wants the strength of the Lord to rise this morning? Amen. That's about seven people. Amen. Who wants the strength of the Lord to rise this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Strength will rise as we waste upon the Lord. Hallelujah.
And we're going to recognize how wonderful, how beautiful he is. What we want to do is that our praise is rise from the name. We recognize that despite our circumstances, he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The angels spend day and night crying, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of God Almighty. And they don't have that privilege that we have to have a relationship with God like we do. Hallelujah. So let us declare that praise is rise from our inside. Hallelujah. All he wants, all I want is for God to be glorified. For the darkness to fade and his light and his glory to be shown and seen. Hallelujah.
I greet you all in a very precious name of our Lord and Savior. Bishop, personally, we have another bishop sitting over there hiding. Greetings. Sister. Greetings. We have some visitors with us, so I welcome you in the very precious name of Jesus. Enjoy God's presence. At this time, I'd like to invite Beverly, who will come and welcome. Morning, saints of God. Morning. Welcome to New Testament Church of God, Captain. Welcome to all those in the sanctuary this morning, for those watching by live stream, our church family and friends. On behalf of our senior pastor, Bishop Spencer Anderson, and his wife, Sister Carmen Anderson, I'd like to greet everybody with a very warm welcome this morning. On returning to the building, we do have to follow some guidelines. It was reported last week that plain clothes meetings are going to churches to check. So if there's any plain clothes meetings, well, <laughs> but the guidelines are on entry to the building, you'll be asked to fill out a track and trace form. You'll also need to have your temperature checked. Please wait to be seated by the ushers because that has to be in line with your track and trace form. We are operating a one-way system in church, so as you come in, always continue around to your left. And also a two-metre distancing, unless you're from the same household. If you do need to access our bathrooms again, please follow the one-way system, go out through the entrance, turn left, and go through the church hall. If you need any assistance, please see an usher or if you have any other needs this morning. Can we please ask you to switch off your mobile phones or put them on silent? And also, if there's an emergency of any kind, please remain seated and the ushers will direct you. At the end of the service, again, please remain seated and the ushers will direct you out row by row. Again, please be aware that as you're leaving the building, to have that distance. And also, if you do gather outside, please try and keep it to groups below six, just in case anyone's watching. I hope you have a very blessed service. Thank you. Amen. You know what, we're coming into winter and I'm mindful that this church cannot do what this church always does in the winter time. That's winter night shelter. I know there's some schemes out there, there's some housing associations, I know mine is one of them, where they're taking some properties that they've got and they're using them as rough sleepers so that no one during the winter or during COVID is out on the street. But we want to pray that people are not out as the winters. You know, sometimes when we walk in our houses, we can take it for granted that we have walks, that we have somewhere to sit, that we have a roof over it. So let us remember those that are not in that place. Good morning. Be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and darkness are surrounding him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And this is the verse I love. It says, and fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. Psalm 29 reminds us, says the voice of the Lord is over the waters this morning. Glory be to God. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. So if you have any doubt this morning that our God reigns, meditate on those two scripture verses. And so, Father, as we come before you this morning acknowledging 
that yes, Lord, you reign, and that you're reigning mightily, and that there is none to compare with you. You're a mighty God. You're the everlasting Father. You're the King of Kings. You're the Prince of Peace, Lord God, and you are amongst us this morning. We welcome your presence, Lord. We welcome you, Almighty God. Come now and have your way in our midst today. Come, Holy Spirit of the living God, and rain down upon us today. Just like it did at on Christ, oh God, at the river Jordan, you sat on his shoulder, and Father acknowledged him. Acknowledge us this morning, oh God. Holy Spirit, sit with us this morning. Father, acknowledge us this morning. Have mercy upon us in this congregation this morning. Lord God, forgive us for our sins that we have sinned and don't even know it, my God. If we've said anything that we didn't mean to say, my God. Lord God, when we think we're right or we're wrong, as we come into your holy, your holy presence, acknowledge
and disease. My God, and take your hands and let you be our shepherd and lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. For we know not the way. But David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, help us to grow and cleave to you, Almighty God and Father. Father, we also pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. They have no remedy, Lord. No remedy, they say, Lord, for Corona. But many have been healed. Many have been delivered. Many my God and my Father, who could it be but you, Jesus? You have been healing. You have been delivering. You've been in the hospital. You've been at the bedside. When the loved ones couldn't be there, you've been there, Lord. And we want to thank you this morning, Lord. We want to praise you this morning. We want to glorify you this morning, Lord, that you're still reigning. You're reigning, my God. In the hospital, Lord, we pray for deliverance. We pray, Lord, that you bring them out of their coma, my God, and that you bring them out of sound mind, oh God, and whole bodies, my God, ready to function again. Bring them through it, my God. Bring them through anxiety, those who are suffering from anxiety. My God, there's so many, so many people have become sick, my God, with depression, oh God, with confusion, our thoughts of attack, of anxiety. But this morning, my God, we bind the spirit of anxiousness. We bind the spirit of anxiety. We bind our spirit. We bind the spirit of bind the scorpion. We feel it. You serpent. We bind you with the power of God this morning. And we say, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Catch fire. Be dissolved. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Come up of God's creation. Lose them in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, my God, touch your people. Move our community and touch our young people. Touch their minds. My God, heal their minds. Deliver them from evil. For thine is your kingdom, the power and the glory. It must come. It must come. And it must come unto them. My God and my Father, save them, my God, and they shall be saved. Heal them, my God, and they shall be healed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet. 
heavenly God. And as I was walking up, that's the song that just came to my mind. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly God. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome. Just want to say welcome to everyone here this morning. Do we have any first time visitors here this morning? Anyone? Oh, stand up, stand up. Come on, though. Well, you, well, you put your hand up, so you might as well stand up now. Come on, and give us a wave. Stand up. Uh, our Sunday morning service continue in the building with social distancing. We invite you all to join us at 11 a.m. You will need to book your space on Eventbrite. Just search for Clapton Church Services and make your booking. The, the, the booking close, sorry, and the booking close 24 hours before service time each week. If you need any support or any help at all, please can you call us on 0208 986 Any help or any support at all, please can you call us on 0208 986 If you would like to join our Zoom meetings, we have Adult Sunday School on Sunday at 5 p.m. We have uprising senior community club activities on a Monday. We have Bible study on a Monday as well at 7.30. We have fasting service on a Tuesday and Thursdays we have a choir meeting at 7.30. We also have uh, the women's and the men's dropping group, live zone, cancer support and single adult ministry. If you like any information at all, you can go on to our website or you can come to the office and see me after service. We also have our connection group which is hosted on Zoom fortnightly or monthly and if you need any information about that, please see Sister Pam. Bishop Spencer and Sister Carmen's appreciation. This will be next week Sunday, the 18th of October. We will be appreciating Bishop Spencer and Sister Carmen. And they, would they like to give us a little wave? Let's see over there. Thank you. Lovely to see them. So we're going to be appreciating them next week Sunday. Baptism classes will commence on Tuesday, the 27th of October at 7:30. If you would like a form, please come to the office and see me after service. Single adult ministry, they're having a talk on single parenting. This will be next week, Saturday, the 17th of October at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you'd like any information on that, please see Sister Petrona. We've got our birthdays. We've got Alicia Brooks and Samantha King. Thank you, everyone. And please continue. Just a apology, with an apology, um, it was inferred last week that the baptism will take place on the 27th. No, that's just the class, we're going to do a Zoom class. Once all your information is in, you'll be contacted with the Zoom and we'll do the class first. Bishop has to work out how we're going to actually dunk you in water. <laughs> <laughs> um, because of the restrictions, we only can hold you down for at least five minutes. <laughs> Just to make sure we're fully submerged. Amen. What time is it now, Saints? Get out, amen. Yeah. We pay gas, we pay electric, 
We do Lysol. We do Uprising Health, which is a seniors. We support cancer. We do so much, and it's dependent on that which you have to give out to God. So don't hold back on giving what? Because it's already this, isn't it? Yes. It's all, doesn't it already belong to him? We just loaned it. Yes. So let's get to him. I can testify that when your hand is open, oh my God. Yes. So is his God's. Amen. Yeah.
He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As usual, he entered the synagogue on a Sabbath day and stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. He began by saying to them, today as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. They were all speaking well of him and were amazed by the gracious words that came from his mouth. Yet they said, Isn't this Joseph's son? They say amen to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Lord.
I know that um, just, just for certain, um, for those at home, um, yes, we, we can do baptism. And um, I have the remedy. <laughs> and I have the method. Amen. The government sent me the remedy. Okay. And also, well, I already have the method, it just sent me the remedy. Yeah. So if you're concerned about us doing baptism, whilst there's a pandemic, we can. Just for clarity, just for clarity, set your mind at ease, it can be done, it can be done. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I'm here to do a couple of things, and that's why I ask you to forgive me before I do what I am going to do. Run over time. <laughs> it's good to see um, uh, Mr. Isaac, Mrs. <laughs> in the house. He, he, he kind of said to me that he won't have to watch YouTube today. <laughs> so he can see me. And uh, sir and ma'am, it's good to have you in the house. Chris! Look at Chris! Chris, I'm glad I didn't throw in the key and you were able to still come in. <laughs> the door was open. Gentlemen, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you. And um, I, I know you're here today to support um, Eustace. Um, and I, I, I know that this is something that we, sh we were intending to do. We planned the program and everything for me. All that we planned, COVID came and said, I'm sorry. Everything was planned, ready to be executed. And of course, um, we end up with a pandemic, so therefore we couldn't do what we really wanted to do. But today I'm, I'm going to ask um, Eustace and Sharon, I, I think you need to stand with me together, right here please. I, I think when you, um, whenever you do this kind of thing, you think you can't leave the wife out. Why are you telling me to stay away from me? <laughs> and um, after I do this, I'm going to ask the canon of the house to, or the canon that's in the house, to just pray a prayer of blessing upon this couple um, this afternoon. Now, I received a ordained minister certificate round about April, or is it even before that? And we planned the program to do uh, to present this to Eustace and unfortunately things didn't work the way it should work uh, so I, I we felt that I, I felt that I didn't want to go to January and still have this thing sitting in my uh, in the safe so I, I felt it's best that I do it now so that we can celebrate with you and I know that the majority of the members are not here, but I know that those of you who are watching online will celebrate with them when, when you see them. If you can't celebrate with them, please pray for them. <laughs> uh, that they're going to need it at some point. So, I have a, in my hand um, a certificate, sir, and it says ordained minister. says I always take I always try and do this uh, because I, I like when I, I like to provoke Eustace and it says ordained minister certificate Eustace King Constance Minister <laughs> Ministerial file number 72011 is hereby certified as an ordained minister in the Church of God with international offices at Cleveland, Tennessee, USA, and is therefore authorized to preach, teach, publish, and defend the gospel of Jesus Christ and perform any other such ministerial duties as authorized by the International General Assembly of the Church of God. This certification confirmed that the principal office at 
Senate Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, USA, on the 16th day of January, 2000, are we 2020? 2020. So you can see how long we have had it, uh, working with it. And there's about five signatures on this one. So, sir, with pleasure, I promise you, it is with pleasure. And, um, well, there's something else that goes with pleasure. I'm proud to present this. That's what goes with it, proud. You mean proud. I'm proud to present to you this certificate on behalf of our national bishop, Dr. Donald Bolt, and myself, and the other ministers who are in the house, to say to you, congratulations. It's all right, we have a bubble, so I want to shake your hand. So congratulations, and use it wisely. I know you're a man who exercises wisdom, and it doesn't make you what you're not. The piece of paper does not make you anybody. It's just say that this is what you can do, but you're already doing it. So I say congratulations. And Lord, to your churches, 
the nation recognize that you're the God who is building your church. May they be that example in the kingdom, and in their family, and in their community. We give you praise. May they bless and serve the bishop of this house and the members of this church, this congregation. And may they be exemplary in their ministry. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> Whilst I was considering presenting um, this uh, certificate this um, morning to Eustace, I solicited. <laughs> God, you know, I said, well, Lord, what do I bring to this service this afternoon as a word? And I ponder, I meditate. And this afternoon, the text which was read um, from the book of Luke. You know, Dr. Luke writing from what Isaiah had already written. And um, I, I wanted to bring to this house, this body, a topic that's said, the anointing. That's it. The anointing. The text has already been read, but I, I, I would just want to, for the benefit of a refresher, was to read it again. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the city that were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all who witnessed to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Prayer has already been prayed. The word of God is a life. A word of God will do that which God has sent it to do. It will always accomplish what God sent it to do. So we honor his word. Amen. We are living in a day and time where everyone wants to accomplish great things in life. Everyone is chasing success and power. Even in the church, people have a strong desire to do the will of God on earth for themselves. But people do not understand that it is not going to be accomplished through your own power or strength. Zechariah 4, 6 says that it is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit who produces the anointing. The anointing is an empowerment from God through the Holy Spirit which causes the believer to become fruitful, fat, powerful, conquering, successful, spiritual, blessed to accomplish God's purpose and plan for your life, for others, spiritual growth, development and strength. You cannot, can I say that again? 
you cannot fulfill God's purpose without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing transforms you from uh, the natural to supernatural, from weak to strong, and from fearful to faithful. I transform you from Clark Kent to Superman. The origin of the anointing was from a practice of shepherds. Here where we're going now. So you need to understand that you are sheep. And every now and again there's some lies that might just, 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 might just be on you. And you need some anointing to get rid of all those lies that's in, in, in your mind. Okay. <laughs> lies and other insects would often get into the world of sheep. And when they got near the sheep's head, they could burrow into the sheep's ears and kill the sheep. So ancient shepherds poured oil in the sheep's head. Okay, so this made the wool slippery, making it impossible for insects to get near the sheep ears because the insects would just slide off. Uh, can, 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 you, uh, 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 can you imagine when God anoints you? Uh, it doesn't matter what comes your way, uh, it just slides off. Oh, come somebody. The anointing makes the difference. It's not about the piece of paper. Can I talk to you, sir? It's not about the paper, uh, the, 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 the title. It's about the anointing of God. So when you're anointed by God Almighty, it doesn't matter what comes your way. <laughs> the anointing makes the difference. So today when you yield to the authority of the Holy Spirit, we are yielding to the head. Mm -mm. We are yielding to God. When we grieve the Spirit, we frustrate our relationship with the head. And we hold the head by simply yielding to the Spirit. Okay, so what, 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 what am I saying? To anoint someone, and, 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 and sometimes I, I, can I, can, I'm going to talk to you. I'm talk to you. you see, sometimes when you pick up this bottle of oil and you rub it on somebody, you better be careful what you're doing. Can I, can I talk to the church? You better be careful how you use it. Because when you anoint somebody, you are consecrating them for a purpose. Useless. Can I, can I, I don't want to use it because I, I, think I, I think you're looking at me so I can talk to you. When I anoint you with oil and I set you forth, I am anointing you because you have a purpose now to do the will of God. So when I use this oil, I am doing it for a purpose. You know, just pick up the bottle of oil and just really, really anoint somebody. It's not about that. The oil is not what made the difference. So when you consecrate and you anoint somebody, you anoint them for a purpose. Okay, so the, the, the anointing comes with power. Ooh. Ooh. You see, when you're anointed by God, it comes with power. And it doesn't matter what that no hell come hell or high water, somebody would say. When you are anointed by God, no demons in hell.
the Lord. You, you, you see, Rev, a lot of us think that when we give a good exhortation, we should do it all the time. And if pastor don't do it, then there's a complaint. I say to you today, you are anointed to preach the word, to teach the word, to publish the word, because that's what God has called you to do. Some of us are called to sweep the building. Some of us are called to work in the kitchen. Not here. Brother Stephen, it's an awful place. You need the anointing of God to stand here. So Jesus Christ was anointing, he said, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he had anointed me. Him. 
and a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. And they tell them that there is no God. Uh, you are my beloved son. And you I am well pleased. Today we affirm you as an ordained minister. That day God affirmed Jesus Christ as his son. <laughs> you are my beloved son. But here is, this is the part that we don't like. This is the part that we don't like. We don't like the challenges. We don't want the body to ruffle our feathers. Everything must be smooth as an oil that is poured on your head. But at the minute that Jesus Christ was affirmed by his Father, Why did you go there? Hear me, brethren. Any day that you bow your knees and accept Jesus Christ as Lord, you're in trouble. Okay. You want me to repeat that? Sometimes it's good to preach, you know. But there is more to 
not not hearing. Find out your purpose. Reverend Stevenson, every time that you, myself, or any other preacher come behind this pulpit and preach, let me tell you this. If you are not anointed to preach, no preach. If you're not called to be an evangelist, don't try to be an evangelist. The evangelists have their own anointing. I don't think I could ever be an evangelist. I don't know how about hit and running. Because that's what evangelists do. They do. They hit and then run. And then the pastor pick up the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't realize that. <laughs> that's what they do. He had anointed me to preach, to set at liberty, to bring freedom to the captive. Let us search ourselves. What has God anointed me to do? I'll say this and I'm going to stop. There are those of us, and hear me, I want you to hear me carefully. Do not allow your mind to go beyond where the Holy Spirit wants to take it. I sat in my, and I know this is going out live, so I know what I'm talking about. So, in 1991, I took my first ministerial license, got my first one. And I will tell you where I'm going. I did nothing. When I said I did nothing, I didn't baptize a, a, a candidate. I didn't listen a baby. What else? I didn't have to do no burial, burial communion. communion, nothing. Hear me.
You see, God will take you on a journey. Same as that we, the, 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 the God, the Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness. God will take you on a journey. He'll take you on a journey that you don't want to go, but God. And we sat down one day with our new pastor. Not even, not even two months. And he said, yes, I know. But have you considered, can I take, let me say this, brethren. Is, have you considered your journey? Have you considered why you went and studied theology? Have you considered why you uh, went and uh, do social work training? Have you considered, oh, somebody, you, you, you hear what I'm saying? Have you considered all of this? So God has put us on a journey, but in that, on that journey there are challenges. Challenges of the heart, challenges of the mind. But when you are anointed by God, <laughs> so, December 1995, my wife and my two girls, like Dick Whittington, <laughs> pick up our bags and I'll wait in Northampton for three years. I won't tell you no more about the journey right now. What I'm trying to say to you is this. When God has called you,
I, I said I spent almost five years as a minister, as a licensed minister, waiting on God for purpose. At no point, and I say this, sisters, at no point had I ever gone to my pastor and said, well, why ain't you using me? At no point had I ever gone to anybody and said, well, you wouldn't even, I've never, I never took time, I never had the time to complain. I was waiting on purpose. So when they asked me to become a pastor, I, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, Lord of mercy, help me, Jesus. There are some sheets that we need to share. <laughs> what God? What God? Every one of us in this house today has an anointing. What is your anointing? What, what's your purpose? What is your purpose? If your purpose is to help, help. God will never anoint you to be a hindrance. Nowhere. Because thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God bless you today. Again, Jesus, preach the word. Remember, you are anointed for such a time as this. You've been doing it. The piece of paper won't stop you. It won't stop you, sir. But I say this to you, in humility, remember what the anointing is for. Anyone in the house today, you need prayer. You need prayer, just raise your hand. You need prayer, just stand up. Just stand, just stand. For those out there who are watching on the live stream, if you need prayer, I don't know what your needs are today, God knows. If you have to kneel down in the living room, kneel down. If you're lying on your bed, that's even fine if you can still talk to God. Allow God to come into your space. And he will meet your needs. Sharon is coming to pray and to close us. But I say to you today, the anointing makes the difference in your life. Bless you. Amen. 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 We have this assurance that God sees all, knows all, is all, and is always present. So I don't have to know the reason you stand, because God knows. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne right now, God. Lord, as your children stand this morning, you see what is in their hearts. You know what is in their minds. You know the reason why they stand. Father, your arm is not short, but you cannot touch and meet that need in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you would heal where there's brokenness. I pray, oh God, that you would bring healing where there is sickness. I pray, oh God, that you would bring stability where there is uneasiness. Lord, I pray if there is worry, that you remove that worry and let them know there is always hope in you. Father, I pray that you would extend your hand. And I pray this, Lord. I pray that the light of you surrounds them always. I pray your love, God, enfolds them. I pray that, God, your presence will always protect them. I pray, God, that you would remain, they would remain in your will always. I pray, God, that your mind, your godly mind will rest on them. I pray, God, that your love would flow through them. I pray, God, that they would adhere to your laws and that they would guide them. I pray that, God, your power would abide in them all the days of their life. I pray, Lord, that your joy would uplift them. I pray, Lord, that your strength would renew them. I pray, Lord, that your beauty, when they look and see your creation, would inspire them. 
And I pray, Lord, that wherever you are, they are, and wherever they are, you are. I pray your protection upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us say the benediction. Please be understand. I think uh, our vision is played up a little bit. It's uh, not doing what you should do. Technology is a wonderful thing that it works. Amen. You should come and say the same. May God bless you richly. May you enjoy your week.